Let's bring in here Warren Hogan, independent economist and a consultant to the small business lender, Judo Bank. Uh, Warren, does your estimate, your forecast correlate with, uh, with what the market's saying? Yeah, no, I think the, the number's going to fall. I think the unemployment rate going to 3.9 is about right. So we had it trending up since its low point of 3.4 over the last year towards four over four in January, and it's since come down to 3.7. It was a big surprise. We've got such strong population growth that it's inevitable that unemployment moves back above four. And, in fact, it has to if we want to get this inflation under control. So, look, I think that's where the market focus will be. I think the line in the sand is going to be around four. And anything under four should be regarded as strong. And I think we're going to see an unemployment rate below four, but we're going to see a lot of job losses because the last number was so strong with 116,000 jobs created. OK, but the fact of the matter is the stronger this number is, the less likelihood there is of a rate cut this year. That's the bottom line of this. And these job numbers have certainly surprised on the upside, at least in the last month or so. Yeah, well, the super strong number from last month people are dismissing. Uh, effectively, if that number's right, then there is no chance of a rate cut. In fact, we'll be talking about rate hikes before long. The thing is, though, these numbers are volatile and what the market's looking for is a reversal of that number. And the big shock, I think, in, given what we saw with US inflation and the sell-off in bond markets last week, is, of course, this number comes in. Um, in a reasonable, like a small amount of growth and unemployment stays sort of where it is. And then that'll just be another nail in the coffin of the rate cut story full stop, not just pushing it back as we've been doing for the last three or four months, but we'll actually get people realising that there's a chance of a rate hike. OK, so this is the point about the Reserve Bank. If it's got this dual mandate of having a look at inflation and controlling inflation, plus making certain we have a fairly uh, full jobless uh, environment, the reality is that while you've got unemployment under 4%, that second phase of what they're seeking to do, trying to find where full employment is, well, at the moment, that really it's, uh, it's undercooked. The, the, the jobs market is almost too hot. No, it's, it's way too hot. And the only reason it's not causing us real inflation and wage problems um, is because the population growth so strong. Um, but that's, of course, feeding into a hot economy with, you know, strong, uh, with basically demand running through the capacity of the economy. And, of course, I think we've got no chance of getting inflation down towards the RBA's target on a sustainable basis while our economy is running through its potential, which uh, I think is best measured by unemployment. And I think the unemployment rate, unfortunately, has to go up towards four and a half at least if we're going to get this inflation and cost of living crisis under control. Um, and, of course, these numbers are telling us that we're not going there. These numbers are telling us that the economy is still running pretty, pretty hot in early 2024. Um, the consumer-led slowdown of last year is probably behind us. And, of course, this of, uh, really stamps out that rate cut story. And the best evidence of that also, not only here but also in the United States, is this sudden spike in bond yields, both short-term and long-term, which really says the markets now have completely reassessed their timing of the first interest rate cuts. Yeah, I mean, that was a, it was a watershed last week. You rarely see a 20 basis point plus move higher in US Treasury bonds. We saw that, and that's because the Fed's basically been giving us a bad signal, not only the, the speeches and the... The, the informal guidance, but they're dot plot. And they've, they're going to be just like Phil Lowe here in Australia. They're going to have egg on their face when they not only can't cut rates, but if they start having to talk about rate hikes in the US, then they, of course, are facing the same problem with their guidance that the RBA did here a few years ago. So it, this is an extremely uh, big moment for global markets. Um, we're seeing a big shift. And I think this employment number in Australia this week is going to be part of that story. But um, the underlying message here is that it's not just a matter of delaying cuts. It's not just a matter of higher for longer. There is a real and tangible risk that rates, short rates have to go higher. And that's not something that anyone is taking seriously enough. Indeed.